This is the beginning of video four, part two. In part one of the, um, in part one of this video, we learned about fission and where the energy comes from associated with fission reactions. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at how we harness that nuclear energy in a nuclear power plant. Before we can talk about, however, a nuclear power plant, I thought you should be aware of a conventional power plant. A conventional, oh, excuse me, a conventional power plant is one in which we would use a more conventional source for heat. In a conventional power plant, most power plants, the source of heat energy is coal, burning coal. Some power plants uh, re rely on natural gas or petroleum. We'll take a look at these more conventional fuels towards the end of this semester. But anyway, the source of the heat energy is just burning the coal, natural gas, or petroleum. And so the way a conventional power plant works is that um, some coal is brought to the power plant and it is ignited. Uh, and it burns, and what it does is it just heats water um, in a boiler. And the water is liquid originally. It's heated, and uh, when water is heated, it boils, and it goes into water vapor or a gas. And then the gas, you know, expands and moves through some piping over to a turbine. And the steam, uh, the moving steam, the moving gas, um, turns the turbine which then generates electricity. All right, so a turbine just uh, has paddles that get pushed by the steam, and the electricity is generated because coils of wire um, are spinning around a magnet. Or some generators work where a magnet is spinning around a wire. Either or, you're going to generate um, a current, which is what we call electricity. Well, that water then um, is passed back through a cooler, a cooling unit, and is liquefied and returns to the boiler and it's in this loop of um, going from liquid to gas, liquid to gas. So the energy is converted from heat energy to uh, mechanical energy to electrical energy. And then you always have some sort of um, cooling area and a lot of times it's just an external body of water such as a river or a reservoir or the ocean where this water is uh, pumping around and cooling the steam back to liquid water and then that warm water is put back into a large body of water. So that's basically how a conventional power plant works. Now a nuclear power plant, when you look at a, a diagram whoops, of a nuclear power plant, Oh my goodness, we're having some technical difficulties. When you look at a nuclear power plant, when you look at um, the right-hand side of the power plant, it looks very similar to the right-hand side of a conventional power plant. You have steam that's been generated by some heat source. It flips the paddles of a turbine, which then generate electricity. So this whole part of the power plant, the back end of the power plant, is the same uh, as a conventional power plant. The difference is the source of the heat. The source of the heat for the nuclear power plant is a fission reaction. And we saw in the last video that fission reactions give off heat energy. So what happens is, is you have this primary coolant, which is water normally mixed with boric acid or some other neutron absorber, in a closed loop circulating around what's called nuclear fuel rods. The nuclear fuel rods have in them some small percentage of uranium-235, which is undergoing a sustained chain reaction and giving off heat. Um, that heat energy heats this, this coolant, which stays liquid all the time because it's pressurized, it's under high pressure, and this super hot coolant, excuse me, it's not a coolant, the super hot liquid um, circles around the steam generator and heats the water to boiling. So this secondary water loop here, the water is going from liquid here to gas here um, as it uh, passes across this super hot um, liquid that's going around the fission reaction. And then that, um, that steam uh, liquid, steam liquid cycle, it provides the mechanical energy to flip the paddles of the turbine to generate the electricity. Now this water is cooled by a third um, cooling water loop that is normally um, also coming from some external water source. So this is very similar to how we cooled the water 
um, in the primary loop for a conventional power plant, only in this case we have three. And the reason why is because, as we will see um, in a later um, video, that the, the nuclear fission products themselves um, are dangerous because they undergo spontaneous radioactivity, which we'll talk about in a, in a later video. In this case, I just want you to be familiar with how a nuclear uh, power plant works. Okay, so um, now the, um, the reaction that's going on inside the nuclear reactor is a chain reaction with the uranium-235. And the reason why it's called a chain reaction is because every time a neutron collides with a uranium-235 nuclide, um, two fission products plus several neutrons are produced. Those neutrons are then free to go and collide with another uranium-235. And you'll notice here that the fission products vary. Um, barium, krypton, strontium, xenon. There's all different types of uh, zirconium. There's all different types of iron nuclides, cesium, that are um, produced. So it's not just one reaction, but you can get a variety of, um, of fission products with these nuclear reactions. Okay, but um, the important thing here is that once you start this nuclear reaction with some initiating neutron, then the reaction is self-sustaining because the reaction itself produces more neutrons, which then in turn will collide with more uranium-235 isotopes and continue the reaction. Okay, so in the nuclear reactor, if we go back up here and look, a very important part of the nuclear reactor is the control rods. What the control rods are doing is controlling the rate of this chain reaction. The control rods are neutron absorbers, okay? And so when you first start and you first put your fuel down into this, um, um, the, the reaction chamber, then, um, you know, there's a lot of, of uranium-235 that's not undergone fission yet, so there's a lot of neutrons that are being produced. So you don't want the reaction to go too fast. You want to have this nice controlled amount of heat given off, so the control rods are lowered. And as the uranium-235 concentration goes down as it reacts away, then the operators slowly lift up the control rods to keep a constant amount of energy being produced. Okay, so the control rods absorb the neutrons to help, whoops, to help um, sustain and control the uh, nuclear chain reaction. All right, and then the 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 fuel rod is a is packaged together in a fuel assembly, and inside the fuel rod are individual um, pellets, and inside these little um, plastic, <coughs> or they're not plastic; they're actually uh, metal um, fuel can, uh, little pellets is uranium oxide. And the uranium is, uh, is mostly uranium-238. It comes out of the ground mostly as uranium-238, with only a very small percentage of uranium-235. Uranium-235 is the fissionable isotope of uranium. And so um, as it comes out of the ground, it's about 0.7% enriched with uranium-235. And so it has to be dug out of the ground. There's a large source of uranium in ca Canada and uh, some in Africa and other places around the world. And so they just dig out this rock that contains the uranium-238, and then they enrich it. They have ways of, um, of separating the uranium-235 and 238 to increase the concentration of, u and then they add it back, the uranium-235, to increase the concentration to about 3% uranium-235. That's what we call fuel-grade uranium. And so that's what's packaged in these little pellets. These little pellets are assembled into these um, fuel rods, and these fuel rods are bundled into fuel assembly. Now you want to keep them uh, separated until you're ready to use them because again the reaction, once you initiate the reaction, um, it's just going to go. So you have to be very careful about controlling the neutrons um, that you're producing. And then here in the core is where the fuel assembly is down. The re a nuclear reactor is housed in the nuclear in the core. And then over here this is a cooling tower. This is just um, the, the last cooling cycle of water is out there and it takes a lot of, um, of evaporation to, to cool that, um, that water back down. Okay, and so here's just a couple pictures of some uh, nuclear power plants. The cooling towers are huge. The, the, the actual core is relatively small because you don't need that much fuel, as you know, to produce that much energy. And here's the inside, a picture of a fuel assembly right here being lowered into a, a nuclear reactor core. 
Okay. All right. Now, one thing that we um, that I just want to go over is just I just want you to be aware of some basic parts of the power plant. You can read about this in your book because I'm going over it very quickly, but I'm just highlighting um, some of the parts of the power plant that I want you to be familiar with. The control rods I just talked to you about. Um, they have to be made from some material that's a good neutron absorber, like cadmium or boron, um, so they can control the amount of neutrons. The primary coolant, of course, is the liquid that comes actually in contact with the, with the reactor. And again, boric acid is added in there because boron, again, is a good neutron um, absorber. The secondary coolant then uh, transfers the heat from the primary coolant as hot steam to drive the turbine. And then the steam is cooled back down to a liquid um, by going through this tertiary uh, coolant system. So it's three loops of um, liquid, basically, to um, control the heat of the, of the water. Okay, and so in addition, there's a considerable amount of waste heat because the water gets so hot that needs to be um, dealt with as well. Okay, um, and one of the things you've probably heard about is then after the, um, the nuclear fuel is spent, then, you know, what to do with the nuclear waste. And right now, all of the nuclear waste, the fuel rods that don't have enough heat energy left to sustain the chain reaction and, and produce enough heat to uh, generate electricity, are just stored on site. And we'll talk about um, the issues around um, this nuclear waste um, after we talk about uh, radioactivity here in a couple of days, but just know that the nuclear waste is stored right on, on, on site. And we'll talk about this in the context of the recent um, nuclear accident at Fukushima in Japan um, as a result of the tsunami. All right, so from this little lecture video, I just want you to be able to, to um, label the parts of a power plant, describe the difference between a conventional power plant and a nuclear power plant, and understand the concept of a fission chain reaction. Those are the three highlights from this video, and you can read about all of this um, in Chapter 7 in your book.